My name is Jerry James, and I'm president and lead consultant at Cortex Genetics here in uh, beautiful Pitt Meadows, British Columbia. Today, I was on a bit of a mission. I was looking for some training materials that would help me illustrate what a normalized difference vegetation indices, or NDVI, was, and how to perform one in fairly simple terms. After a lot of searching uh, in places like YouTube and, and other uh, industry-specific sites, uh, I found that other than a, a few fairly expensive uh, offerings out there, there was really nothing that would uh, suit my purposes. So for that reason, I've decided to create one on my own, and thus this video. So I hope you find it informative and uh, can take something away from it that you might be able to use in your, uh, in your uh, organization. All right, first of all, what is an NDVI? Well, a normalized difference vegetation indices uh, is a remote sensing technique that uh, creates a, uh, a ratio between, um, a, a normalized ratio between the red bands and the near infrared band uh, to produce a uh, number line indices ranging from negative one to positive one that gives some indication of health, uh, of vegetative health. Uh, negative one being no vegetation, positive one being uh, complete coverage of extremely healthy vegetation, some altruistic uh, uh, ultimate health uh, number, which rarely, if ever, exists. Um, the rationale for this uh, NDVI is that uh, green plants, chlorophytic plants, uh, absorb light in the red spectrum very well and reflect light in the infrared, near infrared uh, spectrum extremely well. So by comparing these two uh, wavelength bands, uh, you can uh, develop this indices which will help um, uh, determine the health uh, of veg vegetative species within, in a particular satellite image. For our purposes today, we're going to be using a Landsat 7 ETM image, a uh, subset of the image, uh, in and around the Revelstoke Lake area. If you take a look at the screen, you'll see that I've got grass GIS pulled up, the GUI uh, for the grass GIS pulled up here. And I've, I've already loaded in uh, band 3 and 4. So band 3 is our red, uh, uh, red uh, wavelength uh, band, and band 4 is our near infrared wavelength band. And we're going to use those two bands to do this, do this comparison. So first of all, I've uh, turned on uh, band 3, and let's take a look at it. Uh, this is the red band. And as I said, chlorophytic plants, healthy chlorophytic plants, absorb light in the, uh, in the red uh, range very well. So you can see a lot of these dark areas here may likely be uh, plant material. They could be other things, but they, uh, they could be plant, uh, could be healthy plant material. And these white areas could possibly be uh, either unhealthy plant material or something that's not plant material at all. So in, in fact, I, I believe these are actually glaciers. So you'll You'll see no plants on the glacier, so that's why you're getting this high reflectance uh, in, the, in the red band. Now, if we turn that off and take a look at the uh, infrared band, you should see uh, something a little different. So you see these, those areas that were extremely dark in the red band are extremely light uh, in the, in the um, infrared band, and you can see these glaciers are actually quite a bit darker than they were in the other one. So, uh, Likely, those these areas that, are, that were very dark in the last image and very light in this image uh, likely uh, represent healthy vegetation. And in this area, it's likely some kind of conifer uh, in the uh, canopy that you're seeing here. It's a heavily forested area. All right, so how do we do uh, this NDVI? Well, we don't have a, an actual NDVI tool available in grass anymore, so we're going to have to use Math Calculator, which is probably a good thing because it gives you a better idea of how these uh, vegetation indices work. So we're going to load in to the map uh, calculator for uh, for the A band. We're going to load in the red band three, and for the B band, we're going to load in the near infrared band four. Then we're going to scroll down until we type in the formula. Now the formula is fairly simple, and keeping in mind because this is a, uh, a, a, a continuous indices between negative one and one on, on a number line. All of these values have to be float values. And because Landsat comes as an integer value uh, data set, we actually have to force it to be float values. So we're just going to type in uh, float. Um, and we're going to do uh, A 
sorry, b minus a, so near infrared, minus the red, over float b plus a. And this will give us our vegetation indices. Now we're going to give this a, a name that we that we will be able to easily identify, and NBVI probably works well for these purposes. And we're going to allow it to do an overwrite because uh, we want to make sure if NDVI shows up in the data set uh, that it is overwritten and we have the actual result from this operation. And we're just going to take a quick look, make sure we've got band 3, band 4, and we're doing uh, band 4 minus band uh, 3, yes, or uh, band 4 plus band 3, yes. And these are going to be the results of these two are going to be float value, the results of these two are going to be a float value, and we're going to run it. So the results um, overall should be a float value uh, for all the pixels. The expectation is that you're going to have uh, most of the values are going to be above uh, zero, uh, except for those areas that showed up very white in that first image, which uh, I have identified, at least I'm fairly confident that these are um, glaciers that we're seeing. So now you've seen the, uh, the band uh, calculator or map calculator has done its its thing here and it's done. Now the next thing we have to do before we before we visualize that the output here, uh, we've got to actually apply an appropriate uh, color table to that. Most color tables, uh, or at least the color table that the GRASS defaults to, um, have uh, raster uh, digital number values that range between 0 and 255. So uh, anything that's in uh, sort of between negative 1 and 1 is going to show up as a single color, and that's not really what we want. So we're going to take our new NDVI raster that we created here, and we're going to um, we're going to apply a color table, and I believe Grass has an NDVI color table. Yes, it does right there. We're just going to use that standard NDVI. Somebody took the time to figure out what color ranges work well with uh, these NDVI images, so we'll just use that. We're going to run it. It takes no time at all because all it's doing is associating that color table with this image within GRASS. And of course that can be embedded when you output this in GRASS to uh, um, output imagery, such as TIFFs and stuff like that. Now we're going to load our new NDVI image with the associated NDVI color table. We're going to turn all the other images off, so hopefully everything works well. And we should see something showing up here in short. There you go. So this, uh, as you can see, uh, these whites and blue areas were what I described as, as glaciers. There is some continuous continuation between some of those white areas, which is likely rock or sand. But all of these green and dark green areas are high, highly vegetated areas. Uh, this NDVI um, image now can be used by biologists, environmental scientists uh, to determine the areas of high health and look at some areas that are lower health, which may be fire burns or they may be pine beetle, could be uh, any of a number of things. And this is a, a good first step um, for environmental scientists looking at vegetation health in an area and uh, can be used for those purposes. So. Now that we've completed this, uh, this little exercise, I hope you have a little bit more information or a little bit more knowledge on how to perform an NDVI and how to use GRASS for those purposes. If you have any questions, uh, any further questions, or if you would, would like some help uh, getting one of these NDVIs uh, going or any other kind of remote sensing or GIS uh, tasks uh, going within your organization, feel free to contact uh, uh, Carterix. Uh, you can look at our website at http colon forward slash forward slash www.carterix, C-A-R-T-E-R-Y-X dot com. Or uh, you can contact me at Jerry, that's G-E-R-R-Y dot James, J-A-M-E-S, at Carterix, C-A-R-T-E-R-Y-X dot com uh, for further information. Thank you very much and have a great day.